Well, good evening. My name is Kelly Parsons from the University of California, San Diego, and I'm here this evening to tell you why you should not give hormones prior to surgery. These are my disclosures. Really, when we talk about why we should not do neoadjuvant ADT prior to radical prostatectomy, it boils down to three big, very, very relevant points. First, neoadjuvant ADT does not improve survival in these patients. Secondly, ADT, as every single person on this call knows, has substantial side effects. And third, the American Urological Association specifically recommends against routinely giving ADT prior to surgery. But let's talk about each of these different points in turn. First, neoadjuvant ADT does not improve overall or prostate cancer specific survival prior to surgery. How do we know that? Well, there were a series of randomized clinical trials run primarily by urologists in the 90s into the early 2000s, all of which looked at whether or not anywhere from three to nine months of ADT prior to surgery would improve prostate cancer specific and overall survival. In 2006, uh, the Cochrane Systematic Reviews did a pooled analysis of all of these trials. They were all randomized trials, the gold standard for doing clinical research. And again, they looked at anywhere from three to nine months of ADT prior to surgery. And collectively, what this analysis showed was that overall survival was not improved in these patients. The odds ratio was 1.1, the p-value was 0.69 for overall survival, and for prostate cancer specific survival, it, were, uh, it was a very similar result. So again, ADT prior to surgery, definitive randomized clinical trials did not improve survival. Second point, ADT, as every single person on this call knows, has substantial side effects, particularly in younger men. And whether it's the hot flashes, the fatigue, the cognitive impairment, uh, which is increasingly being recognized as a very real phenomenon in these patients, we all get these calls about these patients. And I would argue, particularly in a lot of our younger patients, who we, we, we would consider uh, with high-risk disease, uh, who have... Um, uh, we would consider giving them uh, ADT prior to surgery. Uh, I think it's also worth noting within this context that a substantial number of these men are never going to regain gonadal function. And this was a paper that was uh, done in the Journal of Urology, uh, an excellent paper. And I think it showed two things to keep in mind when we talk about using ADT in this situation. First, and I think this is very intuitive to all of us in our practice, all of us in our practices, uh, testosterone recovery can be quite prolonged. It's not like you give three months and then suddenly uh, within a week, the patient is back up to you, go nano levels of testosterone. As we all know, it can be a very prolonged recovery that is directly correlated with the amount of ADT, the length of ADT that they got. And on average, it can take up to 24 months uh, in these folks to get back up to where they were before. And extremely importantly, a substantial minority of these patients will never regain their gonadal function again. So that's a long run for a short slide. No survival advantage, and yet we are subjecting these patients potentially uh, to the risk of side effects from the ADT. Finally, very important to note, the AUA recommends that we do not use routine neoadjuvant ADT prior to surgery. And these are codified in the clinical guidelines. Uh, these are clinical guidelines that also are uh, published in alignment uh, with the SUO and also with ASTRO. They're available online uh, at auanet.org where the, all of the clinical guidelines for uh, the AUA uh, are listed. They are continuously updated. And this is the specific guideline related to neoadjuvant ADT. Clinicians should not treat localized prostate cancer patients who are undergoing surgery uh, outside of clinical trials with neoadjuvant ADT. It's a strong recommendation and the evidence grade level is the highest. It's evidence grade level A. Do not give these patients ADT prior to surgery. And it's worth noting that if the AUA says this, these are, that is the correct answer. No neoadjuvant ADT prior to surgery. It is the correct answer for the resident in-service examination for the written ABU exam and for the ABU MOC examinations. Well, when can you consider it? Well, as the AUA said, within a clinical trial, 
This is an example of a clinical trial currently ongoing. It's called the Proteus trial. It's 1,500 patients looking at apalutamide uh, plus ADT versus placebo uh, plus ADT. The primary outcome is pathologic complete response. Uh, perhaps many of you are currently enrolling to this trial. When else? Well, I think uh, it's reasonable to consider ADT to delay surgery in high-risk patients, but this is an extraordinary indication for an extraordinary time. So again, neoadjuvant ADT does not improve the survival, but it has substantial side effects and the AUA recommends against using neoadjuvant ADT routinely outside of clinical trials. Thank you very much.